Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though, trouble. But this time it's the Balkans, the border town of Ketnik, where two of the countries are meeting to settle a few assorted disputes. General Traska, delegate from one of the countries, has sent word to the commissioner that he wants to talk to one of our agents secretly. I'm the boy. I'm to pose as a correspondent and slip the general a password about pipe tobacco. I don't get the reason for the hocus pocus, but the general says we'll regret it if we don't play ball. He's a tough cookie and the commissioner wants to know what's on his mind. It's Thursday when I arrive at Ketnik and I learn that General Traska has just arrived from across the border and is holding a press conference. I head for his hotel suite. Isn't this General Traska's room? Yes, he's inside. Why do you wish to see General Traska? What's it to you? I assure you it is a great deal to me. Will you please answer my question? Before I answer, I'd like to know who is asking the question. I am Captain Ricky of the military. I see. The military usually wear uniforms. On certain occasions, it is better not to. Now, will you please tell me why you wish to see General Traska? Well, he's supposed to be holding a press conference. Oh. You are a newspaper correspondent? Steve Mitchell, Transocean News Service. Huh? Well? You appear to be genuine. Appear to be? You're a real cautious guy, aren't you? In the present situation, Mr. Mitchell, I assure you, caution is essential. Oh, what is the present situation? One of extreme tension between my country and the country represented by General Traska. If any harm comes to him during his visit, you know what will happen. Yeah. I have been selected as the General's bodyguard while he is our guest. Well, if you'll quit bodyguarding that door for a minute, I'd like to get in on the conference. Ah, of course. But I doubt you'll get an interview. The press conference is almost over. My mistake, it is over. Is something wrong, Captain Ricky? Mr. Steve Mitchell of Transocean News Service is late, General. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mitchell. My interview is over. I'm sorry, too, General. My plane was late. Have you lost something? <laughs> Guess I forgot my tobacco pouch. That that you're smoking smells pretty good. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mitchell. It's my own private mixture. Yeah, it is not as lit as I had believed. Yeah, step in, Mr. Mitchell. I think we'll have time for both the pipe pool and the interview. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Riggy, for your watchfulness. I will remain outside until you have finished the interview. That will not be necessary, Captain Riggy. General, I have been officially detailed to guard your person. Have you been detailed to intrude upon my privacy? Your credentials. I uh, suppose you mean... Any others that are not forged, which no doubt state that you are a reporter. Mm -hmm. You and your country are businessmen, Mr. Mitchell. I'm certain your government will approve of my little plan. Well, it depends on what your little plan is. Your country is not in sympathy with the exact form of government which now exists in my country across the border. So? So? Perhaps we can... Change the form of government in my country. Who's going to change it? I am. My plans have been ready for several weeks. I have key men in certain positions, and I'm sure of the army behind me. You mean to seize control of your country? With the support of your government. Well, a thing like that could get pretty bloody. The end justifies the means. What we need is a leader with an iron hand. I am that leader. Boy, how many times before I've heard that tune? I am not through. I suggest you take out your notebook and pencil and pretend to be interviewing me. If you do not, you will have cause to regret it. Sit down, Mr. Mitchell. Yes? I hope the general will forgive my intrusion on his privacy, but I wish to remind him that he is scheduled to make a speech in the village square before long. Your thoughtfulness does you credit, Captain Ricky. I will let you know when I am ready. You think that your brand of government would give your citizens more freedom than they have now? I am not here to discuss philosophies of government. I'm here to make you a business proposition. 
You ought to know my government better than that. They don't support dictators. <laughs> Mitchell, I am not a fool. You have something I want, and I have something to trade. For instance? For instance, your secret file, 72. Oh, yes. The file that disappeared from your country two weeks ago. How it came to be in my possession need not concern you at the moment. The fact remains, I have it. And the seals are unbroken so far. Let's see it. No. <laughs> it is in a safe place. And I think you know I'm not merely bluffing. Look, if you think you can use that to hook us, you're mistaken. May I remind you that this is a business transaction? There's little room in this world for ethics. One must be practical. Rest assured, whether you get your file 72 or not depends on your answer to my proposition. Well, General, you see, I haven't got the authority to give you an answer on a proposition like that. I'll have to check with my boss, the commissioner. I suggest you get in touch with them immediately. I cannot give you much time. Well, I'll see what I can do. I happen to know how important file 72 is to your government. It would be a pity to break open the seal. That's why I'm counting heavily on a favorable answer. Well, where do I get in touch with you when I'm ready to give you an answer? Yes, that's right. It would not do for us to be seen together again. Wait, I have it. I soon have to make a speech. Here. Here's the key to this room. Captain Ricky will be with me. You can come in after we are gone and wait here for me. Okay. I can't get a circuit to the States and my information won't wait. I put my message in code, but the commissioner doesn't bother. You don't need code to say no. Trasca is dead. His neck is broken, and I don't have to be a genius to know it was no accident. Here's my chance to find file 72. I check a couple of drawers, and then I realize he'd never keep it in his room. My best bet is to get in touch with Captain Riki, identify myself, and ask his help. Matter of fact, you. Why? Oh, no reason in particular. I just thought you might be interested in the little matter of the murder of General Traska. What? Yes, being his bodyguard. Look, Mitchell, I warn you. I have too much on my mind to have any patience with the morbid inventions of a cheap journalist. Oh, so now it's all my imagination, huh? Well, Captain Ricky, if you'll walk upstairs with me, I'll show you my morbid invention sitting in a chair with a busted neck. Very well, for the moment I will indulge your imagination. Come. Now, we'll see whether I was imagining things or not. He's 
gone. But of course. What do you mean, but of course? I saw him sitting in that chair dead not five minutes ago. I think you have carried your little game far enough, Mitchell. This is no little game. I tell you... No, 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 no. I tell you. Fifteen minutes ago, General Traska left this hotel very much alive. What? I personally saw him to his car and sent two of my men with him. So obviously he could not have been murdered in this room when he is alive someplace else. But Captain Ricky, he in was... In other words, Mitchell, this entire thing is a figment of your imagination. Oh. In the future, Mr. Mitchell, I suggest you keep your imagination more under control. I assure you my patience has its limits. What's the matter? Are you afraid the body will wander back in? I am quite certain the general does not wish prowlers in his room. Right now, I've got no friends at all in this deal. Captain Ricky lied about General Traska. Why? Maybe the boys in Traska's country found out the general was trying to double-cross them and killed him. Ricky could be in league with them. He might even be the boy who knocked off Traska. At any rate, I know I can't tell Ricky who I am and why I'm here now. I've got to find file 72, which means I've got to find out what happened to General Traska's body. Hello, Mr. Mitchell. May I help you? Yes. How long have you been on duty? Since this evening at 6. Uh, during that time, have you seen General Traska? Oh, yes. About 20 minutes ago, he went through the lobby. 20 minutes ago? Well, one, two minutes on either side. The clerk is lying, and she's doing it on someone's instructions. I bet my stack it's Ricky. Uh... I'm Steve Mitchell, Transocean Service. Yes, sir? I'm trying to locate General Traska. Oh, if you hurry, you may catch him before he finishes his speech. Speech? Yes, sir. I put him in a cab about 15 minutes ago. He said he was going to make a speech down at the square. May I call you a cab, sir? Yeah. Sorry. My name is Broga. I have information for you. What kind of information? General Traska. Oh, wait a minute. If you're going to tell me that you saw Traska ten minutes ago, save it. I'm beginning to think I did imagine the whole thing. I assure you, Mr. Mitchell, it was not your imagination. No? General Traska did leave the hotel. I saw him, but he was carried out the back by the police, and he was quite dead. Why are you telling me all this? You are a reporter. Is it not your custom to pay for what you call a scoop? Hmm? The story's good enough. A man was arrested here in the hotel. If you find out why, then you will have your story. Yeah, I remember now. I saw him taking a guy out of here with adhesive tape over his mouth. Thanks, Broga. <laughs> You in charge here? Yes. Why? I understand you arrested a man at the hotel earlier this evening. I know nothing of such an arrest. Oh, now, don't give me that. As you see, there is no such entry here in the records. You know, that doesn't surprise me a bit. Mind if I have a look around back there in the cell block? No one can go in there without a pass. Who issues the passes? I do. Well, Captain Ricky. How about... How about a pass? There will be no passes. Oh, you don't believe in freedom of the press, huh? Oh, yes. When I am certain it is the press and that the freedom is not abused. I'm just after a story. You will find no story here. You know, I got a hunch there is a story. Whether I'll find it or not, that's another matter. Captain! He tried to hang himself. Take him to the hospital. Yes, sir. Who is he? Just a harmless drunk. Just a harmless drunk, huh? Funny. 
You know, I'd almost bet that he's the guy that you arrested this afternoon right after General Droska was murdered. I mean, right after I saw a figment of my imagination sitting in a chair, dead. You say you wish a story? Uh-huh. Very well. I will give you one. I understand that General Traska has canceled the conference suddenly and decided to drive back to his own country. Oh? Which brings me to the point. What point? You. You are a reporter, and a reporter without news is of no use to anyone. I am certain there are other places where you can find much more to write about. I get the message. And if I don't leave town? It would be unfortunate if you had to write a story about um, an accident, Mitchell. My own, of course. The next train leaves in one hour. I sincerely hope that I will not find you here in Ketnik after that. Oh, Mr. Mitchell, did you find General Truska? No, I'm afraid I'll have to wait till morning. Now I'm looking for the porter. Oh, I'm sorry. broga has gone home. Uh, could you give me his address? Yes, I know it. I have just one hour to find file 72. That means I've got to find out what they've done with General Truska's body. Broga is my only in. Here you are, Mr. Mitchell. Thank you. Mr. Mitchell. Broga, I'd like to talk to you. At this hour? Maybe this will make it not so late. You gave your story to your newspaper? Not yet. You said you saw them take Traska's body out of the hotel. Yes. You any idea where they took it? Uh, no, none at all. Broga, you must help me. But it's you're a fool. I get it. You killed Traska. Broga wants it in the newspapers. You paid me to do it. I did not pay you to get caught. No. All right, Mitchell. Drop the gun on the bed. OK, Captain. I sort of expected you around here long about now. And I'm not surprised to find you here. We suspected Tovik faked the suicide attempt so that he would be taken to the hospital where escape is easier. We allowed him to escape, and he led us to you. You hired Tovik to kill Traska. Now that he has outlived his usefulness, he too is dead. Broga killed Tovic. He was about to do the same to me, I think. It does not matter who actually pulled the trigger. You're all in this together. What? <laughs> Would you mind telling me why I do all these things that you're accusing me of? Very well. You are the employee of Traska's country. You learned he was trying to betray you. So you had them killed here in my country, which furnished the incident which would provoke the war you seek. Oh, that's why you've got Traska's body hidden. Exactly. No body, no murder, no murder, no incident. No incident, no war. We've been a little too smart for you, Mitchell. There's nothing wrong with your logic, Captain, except that you've got the wrong boy. I think it's about time we were putting some cards on the table. Here's mine. The United States? Yeah. You know, I suspected you when you lied to me about Traska's murder. I thought you were working with the killers. That's why I didn't show you those before. Well, I owe you an apology. Now, oh, forget it. Hey, uh, Junior's coming around. Well, uh, since you're not guilty, that leaves only Broga as our man. All right, take him to jail. And have them come for Tovik's body. Well, at least you've got Traska's killer. Yeah. Exactly what happened, Captain? Well, Tovik must have climbed along a narrow ledge and in through Traska's window. I heard the struggle, and I ran inside and caught Tovik. Unfortunately, Traska's neck was already broken. But my first thought was to get him out of the hotel before he could make an outcry. <laughs> I saw you bringing him through the lobby with tape on his mouth. Well, I came in time to see you leave the general's room. I followed you, and when you started to make the telephone call, I believed you were trying to get the story out. <laughs> you did a good job on briefing your citizens on covering up the killing. You know, I was beginning to think I really was crazy until I met Broga. Well, he wanted you to know that Traska really was dead, because he thought you were a reporter. 
and that you would make a headline out of it. But you know, I still don't understand your interest in this matter. Well, Traska had a document that was stolen from my country, uh, File 72. But that's no problem now. If you just take me where you have Traska hidden, I'll go through his papers and get the file. That's the end of my job. You know, earlier in the evening I told you General Traska had suddenly decided to drive back to his own country? Now, look, don't you start that again. Traska is dead. I know, I know. But we are going to try to make it look as if that murder was an accident and that it happened in Traska's own country. I don't get you. A moment ago, one of my men started for the border, driving Traska's car with the body in it. But if he drives across the border, they'll discover that Traska is dead. Ah, he will not have to drive across. Near the border is a deserted quarry. When Traska's car is rolled off the road, it will land in Traska's country and look like an accident. And file 72? Oh, it's in the car. Great. Well, I guess that car is my next stop. Mitchell, are you insane? It will mean going into their country and trying to escape detection by their patrols. I'm not going to leave file 72 in the very country we don't want to see it. Well, yes, Mitchell, but... Look, where's the wreckage of the car? Mitchell, where's the wreckage of the car? You could never find it. What? Alone. So? I think I'd better go with you. Okay. Here, here's your gun. That's Brogus. Oh. After an hour of hard driving, we pull up at the abandoned quarry. Traska's car and file 72 are already resting at the bottom. That's it. See anyone around? No. How often do they patrol this area? Three times each day, but at irregular intervals. Well, now's as good a time as any. You know, if we're caught, we may never be heard of again. We've been through all that before. File 72 is in that car. All his papers are in his briefcase. Let's go. the file yet. Leave it. If we don't find a place to hide, they will have both the file and us. Come on. What is this? His neck is broke. You go make report. I keep guard. Ah! Corporal! Corporal, come back! General Trotsky is alive. We must get him to a doctor. Come on. Uh, just a moment. Huh? Why you kick me? I wanted to make you groan. Why you not groan yourself instead of kicking me? I wanted it to sound realistic. Well, I'm not convinced. Oh, you're just a skeptic. Come on. Uh, one moment. Uh, huh? No! Ah, ha, ha. Now I'm convinced. I do groan much better than you. <laughs> Come on, let's get that file. 